The Medieval Institute at Notre Dame is renowned for its scholarship on the cultures, languages, and religions of the medieval period. In fact, the Institute is home to the largest contingent of medievalists at any North American university. And here to tell us more about the Institute is the Robert M. Conway Director, Tom Berman. Tom, welcome to Notre Dame Day. Pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having uh, me. I want to start with, uh, you know, Notre Dame has been able to build such an exceptional medieval program over the years. Uh, how, how have they done that? Well, one of the ways they did it is they started early. So the Medieval Institute was founded in 1946, mm -hmm. uh, was the first institute founded at the University of Notre Dame, was the first place that Notre Dame gave uh, PhD uh, degrees, was in, in medieval studies. Um, and over the years, they continued to invest uh, in medieval studies. So when Father Hesburgh uh, arranged for the building of the Hesburgh Library, mm -hmm. he set aside a whole floor, the seventh floor of the Hesburgh Library, as the Medieval Institute. That's where our offices are. That's where an amazing collection of resource, uh, research materials for the Middle Ages are. And then there have been important uh, gifts from, from supporters of Notre Dame that have helped sustain this, particularly gifts from Robert Conway, mm -hmm. after whom my, my chair is named. Mm -hmm. um, and that has allowed Notre Dame to recruit an enormous number of uh, faculty um, studying everything from, from Old English and Old Norse literature uh, to um, uh, Arabic, medieval Arabic uh, literature, to Islamic uh, theology, to um, Byzantine art history. Uh, almost every area wow. of medieval studies in the whole Western Eurasia, we have people who work in those areas who are distinguished international scholars. Very, very broad topics. I, I know as the director, you've been focused on getting the community and the institute more engaged with each other. How have you gone about doing that? Well, one of the things that I've been working at in the year and a half that I've been director is to help make Notre Dame better known, or to, to help make the medieval institute better, better known at Notre Dame itself, um, because interestingly enough, while the Medieval Institute is very widely known abroad, mm -hmm. when I travel in Europe or the Middle East, people have all heard of the Medieval Institute and they're very excited about what we do. They want to come here and be part of conferences. Uh, but on campus, uh, very intriguingly, uh, the Medieval Institute is not necessarily that well known. Mm -hmm. um, I meet many students who had no idea it existed, many alumni who don't, and, and a fair number of faculty don't really know of the long tradition we have of uh, excellence in research and, and, and graduate education, undergraduate education in these areas. So one thing is to do things like this sure. and actually get out on campus and talk, but the other thing is that we want to connect much more effectively with the local community here in South Bend, so we're beginning to work um, uh, through the Office of Public Affairs uh, on launching programs in public schools um, to begin recruiting students to think about the Middle Ages when they're in middle school and high school. Okay. Um, so these are a couple of the initiatives we're taking. And one thing that may help, we talked about this off camera, is kind of the, uh, the rise in pop culture surrounding exactly. Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings in, in, in recent years. That, that's kind of shed light on, on your area of work. Why, why do you think the interest in that suddenly? Well, in, in some ways, it's not a sudden interest. Okay. Uh, in many respects, um, the study of the Middle Ages, especially in North America, has been driven by images of the medieval past that are deeply embedded in our culture, beginning with uh, the novels of Walter Scott, which have this very romantic image of the Middle Ages um, and inspired many people in the 19th century. Uh, the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. basically, if if you scratch a medievalist, uh, especially my generation, yeah. uh, maybe get them a drink or two, they'll admit <laughs> that uh, reading The Lord of the Rings as an adolescent was part of what drew them to this part of our own tradition, which is both in some ways very foreign and in other ways is very familiar. And I think it's that foreignness and familiarity that draws us and then once we start investigating, we find that the Middle Ages is deeply relevant to the present. Relevant in as much as, for example, it was the Middle Ages that invented universities. The, sure. the whole notion of a university is a high medieval European invention, and, and, and we're right in the middle of one that functions in many ways like a medieval university. So there are all kinds of ways in which we discover that this medieval period is actually crucial to who we are right now. Mm -hmm.
fascinating stuff. Well, Tom, we're out of time, but I want to thank you for joining us You're on Notre Dame Day. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Maybe we'll have to get that drink and scratch. Ah, uh, there we the go. <laughs> Let me know. I'll be happy. All right. I'll even buy the first one. All right, Tom, thank you. <laughs>